Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're talking about more exciting announcements from Apple about running Stable Diffusion on Apple Silicon and also LLMs and a few other things. So this came from WWDC uh, from a smaller talk that maybe didn't get a ton of coverage and I think it's really cool. So we've covered on this channel before um, some of the M2 releases and what's possible at the very high end of M2 and running Stable Diffusion or running LLMs. We talked about running Falcon and some big, big LLMs that generally you had to have either a set of A100s or a cloud instance to run and how you could run those on you know, local M2 instances. And what Apple is showing here is that you can do similar things with some software tricks that they've developed uh, with some tooling called um, Core ML V7. And why that's important in terms of doing it on MacBooks, iPads, and iPhones. Specifically, what Apple has to show here is a bespoke implementation of a multilingual LLM and more importantly, um, stable diffusion and control net. And there are a few tricks they've used to do this and I think it's pretty cool. So let's get into it. So Apple isn't the first to try this. The first company to try this was Snapchat with SnapFusion. And what's curious is SnapFusion actually uses CoreML and the neural engine, which is sort of the software suite that wraps CoreML and lets anyone who's building iOS apps or Mac apps uh, for Macs that use Apple Silicon um, to use that part of Apple's processor. And what's cool is, you know, the, the trend is using GPUs in the cloud for mobile apps is kind of overkill and it's expensive since GPUs are hard to find. So Apple putting engineering time into this actually makes a lot of sense. And to make this make more sense, um, they did a few things. So the first was focusing on something called weight compression, uh, specifically um, six bit weight compression, which means you can take the trained um, model or the set of weights that you have to use to actually deploy these models and make it smaller. In this case, they were able to, with uh, six bit weight compression, get um, the version of stable diffusion they're using under one gigabyte, which is pretty cool. They've also improved uh, their neural engine performance by about 30%, which with a few tricks that we'll cover in just a bit. And they've also benchmarked all of this for iPhone, iPad, and Macs, which gives a lot of context into where differing Apple Silicon attributes, like how many CPU cores, GPU cores, and neural engine cores, and more importantly, RAM uh, affect performance. And then of course they talk about their um, multilingual system text encoder support, which is the first step in their new pipeline for stable diffusion uh, instead of clip and a few other things. GitHub goes into this in a bit more detail, and I think they've broken it down in a pretty cool way. If you're a developer reading this, uh, the, the big idea with this is showing uh, initial examples in Python and then going to Swift. So clearly Apple wants you to use Swift if you're doing this on their devices. All of these are also available on Hugging Face, so if you wanna try these out for yourself, they're up there, um, definitely go do that. Uh, one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is that I didn't, I didn't realize that Core ML actually had Python bindings to begin with, but I guess it does. There are some benchmarks here and some other information, but I think initially what's worth looking at is the raw outputs from their systems. So weight precision isn't super important, but basically this is just um, how much context you have in terms of the weights. Uh, in theory, the greater the precision, the larger they are, and the greater the precision, the better the images should look. And what's impressive with this is with, even with six bit weight precision, which is part of their compression, everything looks pretty good. Better than, you know, you know, like stable diffusion would look like coming out of a pretty capable GPU even six months ago. And the really important thing to look at here is they're comparing CPU and neural engine to CPU and GPU. And with our last video on Apple Silicon, you could tell that it's now possible to run inference uh, either with just CPUs and just GPUs, and also uh, with a bit of a mix of, as you can see here, the CPU and neural engine. So you can tell that even on the with the compression, the results are still pretty good. Uh, some of these are pretty hard to discern what they're even from, which is great because it means less space. Uh, less memory usage and basically the same output. And the biggest one here that this is meant to show is that the output from the CPU and neural engine and CPU and GPU is candidly the same. If you showed me these without showing me this column, I wouldn't be able to tell you which were actually you know, better or worse. I think they're pretty much about the same. And it's important to note that there are minor differences here, specifically um, between the 16-bit and 6-bit results. The differences are comparable to the differences across Float 16 and Float 32. And um, this is kind of a quirk of how this is implemented on Apple Silicon, but I wouldn't read into it too much. The improvements that actually improve the neural engine, which again is how, you is how Apple has wrapped the core ML processing units around software that lets you use them. They've done a few things. So basically at a high level, um, they've focused on weight compression 
and specifically uh, techniques for pruning and palletization and uh, linear 8-bit quantization, which basically are ways that you can cram more information into a smaller space while keeping the important bits that actually you really need. The more technical implementations that they've done for this are, um, one is a process that they call post-training palletization. The other is um, training time palletization. And they roughly describe this as um, the neural engine being capable of accelerating models with low palletization, so 246 or 8 bits, with iOS 17 and Mac OS 14. Compressed weights for core ML models can, ju can be just in time decompressed. This is the big innovation here during runtime, uh, as opposed to ahead of time decompression upon load, which if you've run stable diffusion on a GPU, uh, like a, a NVIDIA GPU, this is what you do when you're waiting for it to spin up and dump everything into the GPU memory. They say this yields significant memory savings and enables models to run on devices with smaller RAMs, so for instance, older iPhones. In addition, compressed weights are faster to fetch from memory, since it's just less stuff going back and forth, which reduces the latency of memory bandwidth bound layers. Um, so basically the lanes that are between either the core ML processing or the CPU, um, there's less stuff going back and forth. So in theory, that's faster and they're less burdened. This just-in-time compression behavior depends on the compute unit layer type and hardware generation. So basically they're saying, depending on the nomenclature of the Apple silicon you have, depending on your device, so obviously bigger and faster if it's on a desktop kind of device and maybe probably a little bit smaller and slower if you're on a mobile device, the performance will vary. But um, very cool, and another cool thing to note here is that's why when you look at some of the more exotic uh, fine tunes and tweaks of LLMs like Llama and Falcon, that's why sometimes compressed versions of this uh, that focus a little more narrowly on a specific niche can actually perform better in specific areas like encoding or writing uh, than generalist models like GPT 3.5 or even 3.5 Turbo, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing that I do think is interesting is when they show latency and iterations per second based on different devices. So obviously the iPhone 14 Pro is on the mobile device end, kind of the cream de la creme, and they show some uh, M2 Ultra benchmarks as well, which is cool because no one technically has that other than Apple. This is important in noting because I mentioned Snapchat earlier um, with SnapFusion. Uh, with Snapchat's implementation of this, specifically with some of their LLM stuff, um, these improvements, although it's just 10 to 30% uh, technically, with Snapchat's implementation of SnapFusion, that could actually equate to up to a three to four X performance improvement. And the reason this is cool is it, it's a bit of a sea change in how Apple interacts with um, companies that are using their software. So it's less adversarial, totally different to how they do payments, which is, you know, they, they are closed source and say, we're gonna take everything we can get. And with this, uh, it's Apple build, being a bit more open source, saying we want to build with you, um, approve and sort of support existing architectures you've already invested in with engineering time, and all in all, make iOS the best platform for mobile AI, which I think is kind of cool. So we will be covering uh, the GGML updates, and I think those are also um, massively important to um, the future of iOS and AI. It'll be curious if Apple starts to pick up that uh, development as well. But yeah, as always, I hope you learned something and we will see you in the next video.